it was a really nice week running up to the final, to be honest. Usually we're in the Eliminator or the extra game or the playoff, and to qualify straight for the final, get relieved a bit of pressure. We got um, a trip to Scarborough, because that's where we were going to play the, the Eliminator game, if we had to play it. So we still used those facilities and had a nice trip away to the beach for a couple of days, which I think actually worked out really well for us. You know, we got to have a, an overnight stay away as a team again, go enjoy Scarborough, because we all love that ground, um, and just really relaxing, just Focusing on ourselves, that was the main thing. I think we've thought too much about oppositions in the past and we've just got to prepare um, ourselves, not think about who we were playing, because at that stage we didn't know. Um, so it was just a, a great week build up. I was extremely nervous, to be honest. I remember sitting down, eating some breakfast, doing Wordle, which is something that I do every morning. And from breakfast, you could see Lord's Cricket Ground because we were staying so close to it. and. Yeah, I didn't think I would be as nervous as I was for the build up and eating my breakfast, but I suppose I was and it was a big day for us. I got to play in the 100 um, once, so I was lucky that I didn't have um, the gravitas of that on me the first time I played at Lords. But we just really emphasised as a team, we're like, we're going to enjoy this. How often do you get to play at Lords, especially as a female team, especially as a female domestic team? No one's played at Lords so far, so it was just enjoy it and take everything in that you can we told the younger ones like you know on your way to the ground make sure you're just taking it all in and when you get there before you start your prep allow yourself to have that moment and take in how great it is that you're at lords because it's something a lot of people would kill to be in your position so it was just like being a fan for the morning before our business started i'm a bit bottom heavy <laughs> People were trying to hide the nerves a little bit because we all do it because we don't want to. We don't want people, other people, to click on that we're nervous. Um, but there was a few nerves around the group, and I think that's natural, that's normal, and it just shows people care. It was lovely to wake up and it wasn't raining. Uh, obviously, you worry when it's a back end of September uh, fixture. You think, what's it going to be like? It's going to be freezing, but sun was shining. Um, the glorious diamonds flag was waving away in that blue sky, which was a lovely sight to see, and um, it was. We thought it was just going to be a good day of cricket. We didn't have to think about Duckworth Lewis or anything like that coming into it. Or sometimes later on in the season, you do have to think about maybe weather's going to come into it. But we just knew that um, it was going to be a, a lovely day and to enjoy some cricket at Lords. Uh, well, we'd watched obviously the game before, the England game that played the day before, and we knew that the wicket was probably going to be a little bit tough. Um, and obviously at Lords is a big slope, a lot of people hadn't played at Lords before so we knew that was going to influence the batters and the bowlers in terms of their setup and where they are at the crease. Um, but yeah, there was a few overhead conditions, we knew that the sun was going to come out, we're in London, the sun always shines in London, doesn't it? So um, yeah, we were happy with the conditions and we were very happy to have a bat first. <laughs> I think Lords is obviously one of the most special grounds that, that you'll ever play at, you'll ever, ever be involved at. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, the, the whole experience of being there and, and walking in for the first time and for players who have obviously never been there. And it's just about soaking it all in. I think it's it's such a special place to be. And, you know, the girls are really excited um, turning up the day before and then kind of have a look around. And I was kind of taking that out of it. And then so when it turned up on the day, it was just, you know, a normal day, as normal as it could be, um, and then just get on with the business. <laughs> I know the best year of my life, like. I'm glad I started that. Got <laughs> <laughs> all that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> obviously had a really good season we, we we deserve to be in the final um and the rest of it is just trying to make things as normal as we possibly could um it was it was the walk probably from the changing room down to the pitch that's something I, I told everybody to make sure you do that before you go out to bat um whichever it was the day before or on that day just to kind of get used to it. it's not often do you walk out of bat through the long room 
down past the members and onto Lords. So it was just kind of taking that initial um, worry out. And uh, yeah, but I think it was, it's, it is obviously very special. And, and the girls, they did take it in the stride and it was, it was really good. Isaac first, then three groups of fielding. Can I have the 12 fielding, please? Okay, off you go. It was just about trying to make the day as normal as we could, but but obviously just embracing where you were you you expect people to be you know a little bit more excited a little bit more jittery there's the day before we tried to get you know all the pictures out the way because everyone's a picture at lords with a long room behind them and the, the pavilion behind them um but it was i think it was you, you can't block it out you shouldn't ignore it it's a special day and it's a special occasion it's just the team that kind of dealt with that emotion the best that was going to come out on top And I can't really remember at all what I said, um, but it's for me. It's it's they, if they couldn't get up for that game, they were never going to up for any game. Um, whatever I said wasn't really really going to matter at that point. Um, it was just about again controlling your emotions on the day and, and, and just and just embracing it. Please welcome the match officials and the two teams, the Southern Vipers and the Northern Divers. Oh, I think we had an incredible start. Like I said, we did what we wanted at the toss, even though we lost it. And Lauren and Lindsay put on a really good partnership to set the tone for us and we knew that was going to be a really difficult patch of batting for them and how they got us through the power play and I think we didn't lose a wicket until maybe the 18th or the 20th over so that was the best partnership we'd ever had as an, as an opening unit so that set the tone for us really well. Shot. Leaning into that Winfield Hill. Finding the gap through the covers and the first boundary of the final. Yeah, obviously a really good start from uh, Laws and Lindsay. Um, you know, built a really good foundation for us. Short and whipped away. Not that short though, Winfield Hill makes the most of it. From what I can remember, we had a steady start as always with Laws. She's been an absolute rock up the top of the order. So I'll admit I was sat on the balcony um, looking out a bit nervous, thinking I just hope Laws stays there. She's done so well all season and she deserves to have another innings. And you feel so confident when she gets some runs on the board and a good start. Oh, that's nicely timed by Lauren Winfield here, continuing her good form with the bat. Again, very nice timing, and that's what you were speaking about, Dominic. Mm, Lauren Winfield here, being able to put away poor delivery, really, a full toss outside. Oh, nicely worked through the gap for Lauren Winfield here. Lindsay struggled um, up until that point opening the batting with her but she stuck with her and I think it's probably their best opening partnership of the comp which is always a timely manner to do it and I think it just gave everyone a moment to breathe um, and then come in and do their roles um, as we've practiced all year so it was a, a relaxing start. More powerfully struck down the ground that's what she's been searching for Lindsay Smith and this time everything was good. Really well played. Dangerous perhaps. The ball spinning away from the left-hander, but enough on it to reach the boundary. That'll be 50 for Lauren Winfield Hill. She is having a magnificent season for the Diamonds. Reaching the milestone in 74 balls. She knows what it takes to win big games of cricket here at headquarters. World Cup winner in 2017. Cotton bold. We then, we lost a couple of, couple of quick wickets. 
Charlotte Taylor makes the breakthrough. She tossed it up that little bit higher, tempting Lindsay Smith. To be honest, I thought this is typical diamonds. Wickets are tumbling in a final and I'm gonna have to go in and do something again. Well, you wanted a wicket, you got a wicket. It's one of them things, isn't it? We've, we've got a lucky side where we've got depth. So, but it is a final. Yeah, like I'd only just got back up to the change rooms after I got out and then I heard another cheer and I was like, oh no. And that's when I think Stara got out first ball, but. She has put pressure back on the diamonds. Back-to-back -back wickets for Schofield and delight for the Vipers. Um, we like to make things difficult for ourselves. I've mentioned before, and a lot of people have said it, we do bat all the way down our order and we're all very capable with the bat, but you'd obviously rather not do it um, down that lower end. And I just hoped it wasn't going to repeat of the, the previous year. Um, we really stumbled in the in the last Rachel Hale Flint final. We were about 110 for eight and we managed to scramble to a, just about a score. And I, I hoped it wouldn't be the case. Oh, this one pitches on, has to be out, is out. All of a sudden now, the Vipers. Every ball looks unplayable. Direct hit could be close. Maybe run out here. He is run out. What a piece of fielding. The Vipers have turned this game on its head. They are in complete control, the Northern Diamonds. I, I don't... I, I think there's, there's a lot of faith in the group. But we've, had, we've had a really, really good year and had, obviously, contributions from, from all players. Luckily enough, like I said, we've got depth. Best batted extremely well. Dobbo batted extremely well. Obviously, Loz had partnerships with these people as well so I think we set the tone and we we put a total on that we were very happy with. That will toss and given the treatment had to go and does go. Pete in the double figures. Leah Dobson who's had a very hit and miss season you know she'd missed quite a bit of the season through injury and she'd come back and she was looking for runs and you just you're so desperate for everyone to do well. Gives herself space and clears mid off Dobson there down towards the pavilion. Um, and then, then it was it, we had a really good partnership. I think it was between I think um, Bam Bam um, Best was obviously involved in that. Uh, Leah Dobson involved in that. So that kind of got us up to a, a strong position. It was great to be able to watch her and Bess, who's had a, a, an equally good season, just anchor the innings. And it was like the next generation stepping up and doing it. And we've relied so heavily on people like Lauren and, and Jenny Gunn in the past. So it was it was then to calm your nerves again, put the pads back away, and. Um, Hopefully these two will see us through. Oh, thumped. Absolutely thumped by Bass Heath. Full to finish and helped away. So two boundaries in the over. Heath moves into the 20s. Bess is a real asset for us down there. She's you know hits the ball really hard. She was coming off a, a good run of form. Um, Leah hadn't played too much cricket, so for her it was it was really pleasing to see somebody obviously you know, step up on that stage. Pulled hard to finish and finds the gap. Again, Bess Heath. And up and over. That's a brilliantly timed shot from Leah Dobson. A firm struck again. And this time we'll go all the way. So Bess Heath now really looking to unleash. Dragging it down this time. Field, and that's not what the Vipers would have wanted at all. Well, up and over, mid off. You probably, obviously, in every game you want a few more, but I think we, we really fought towards the end and put us in a good position heading out to field. But it was, I'll say, it was nice to actually go out and bat, not face a ball, and get a red ink at Lords. <laughs>
Lizzie Scott has Georgia Alwis. Out. Full toss and Maya Bouchier has picked out Lindsay Smith. A simple catch for her and a big moment in this game. Maya Bouchier was going so well. Edge, yep, gone. Big moment in this final. Emily Windsor. Oh, and it is taken straight away. Charlie Dean dragging a short one straight to mid wicket. in this match there it is right there Adams went wandering Levick through the gate Winfield Hill did the rest she's gone for 70 oh Boulder through the gate Lindsay Smith's elated Schofield castled for 15 Two wickets in three balls for the Diamonds. I think I had a discussion with Loz probably two overs before the last over and I thought, who, who should I go to? And we both looked around and they said the only person, Lindsay had bowled out her overs, and very, very economical 10 overs and the next best person was Lev and, and uh, back to 100% I spoke to her before she I think I probably told her the over before, I said, are you happy to take that over? And she said, yeah, absolutely. She thrives in them condi conditions. She's an extreme competitor and she's been so successful for us over the last three years. So I think there was no better person to throw the ball to. Um, I only got official confirmation when Lindsay bowled the penultimate over. I'd been sort of doing the maths myself whilst um, we got to the last 10 about how it could play out. And I realized there's a very good chance it's gonna be me and Lindsay to finish where the two most experienced bowlers there. We've done that job a lot during this season. And so, yeah, I sort of got myself ready and prepare. Holly um, doesn't necessarily need to tell you these things. And when Lindsay came on, I figured out that it'd be me to take the last. Started to get myself ready for that, um, hoping it wouldn't get to that, to be honest. But it, it did, and I was ready if it did. I'm being brutally honest, I, I can't really remember that last over, it was all just a blur. Um, I kept thinking to myself, what on earth am I going to say if we lose three in a row? Through the offside early in the over. Levick here. It's helped down the ground, it's going to have to be one for a moment, they consider two, but that's just not on. Nearly an overthrow, and overthrow it is. Well. Um, to be honest, when that overthrow happened, there was um, a carbon copy um, that had happened in a previous domestic fixture with the Sunrisers. There was overthrows from Maddie Villiers and two fielders came diving and it was all we talked about in training that week about how could you do such a thing um, when you're that close. And then when I saw Dob Dobbo's got one of the biggest arms in the team, when I saw it going, I was just thinking, oh, what, do it, we're gonna like ruin it ourselves. Like We're not gonna get beat again by a team, we're gonna ruin it ourselves. And I've never been more thankful to see a diving Phoebe Turner just clean it up and manage to stop it. And we just had a moment where I think we all looked at each other, especially the older ones, and we were just like, calm everyone. Like all we've talked about all year is who can stay the calmest wins. And it was just having a moment to reset and calm and swear at Dobbo later. <laughs> What is going on? Like, surely this is not going to happen to us again. How have we done it? But it's one of nerves. Like, there was nerves at the start of the game and we've never ever been able to take it to the final of before. So there's always going to be nerves. But luckily, Phoebe Turner knew how to dive and back up. So luckily stopped it for us. <laughs> it's high. It's hanging in the air towards mid wicket and it's taken. Emma Marlowe, the teenager, had to hold her nerve. Had to take the catch, did take the catch. You're starting to dare to dream, yeah. Um, I was very thankful that um, Marla looked really calm underneath. I don't think I could have looked that calm as an 18 year old in a Lord's final with an absolute skyer catch, but she made it look easy and it was another sigh of relief and another, okay, I just need to keep ticking these balls off now because 
we're on our way to win this and it is 100% ours to lose so that was another tick in my mind that I've got through it. I think it's never done till the game's finished, until the last ball's bowled you don't know who's going to win or lose. They still had a chance to win but it was going in our favour. Through the offside and finds a gap. The Vipers are alive still. Yeah, when Lauren Bell came out, and she probably won't mind me saying, she's a tail ender herself, like me, and I was confident that I could see it home against a tail. I think you've not been in these positions before. Vipers are so strong batting, they hardly ever get to their tail, and I knew it was a tall ass. And then to see her absolutely crunch her forward, which I think is the best shot I've ever seen her play. I was at the beginning, that's the first time in the over that it kicked in that we could actually lose. Um, Again, I just ran up to Lev and just basically asked her if she was all right. Like one of the ways that I go and speak to bowlers or certain bowlers is by having a laugh and a joke with them, helping them to relax. And I just went, the most important person in that moment was Lev because she was the one bowling the over. So I just asked her, reassured her and asked her what her plan was for the next ball and told her not to worry about that last ball because we've all legs spinned, don't we? So then, then balls happen. She hit with a spin again. Tries to go across the line this time. Gets off strike. She'll want to come back for two here. Does come back for two. Will she take it? Outside of the off stump. Hammering it out to deep cover and cut off. They're going to be happy with one. It's going to be a run out as well. So not only do they only get the single, Bell's been run out in the deep. Which means they'll need a six from the last ball. I was very happy to see the next ball go straight out to, to Bam, uh, Bess Heath. She's an absolute rocket in the field. I knew she would throw her body behind anything, so there was never any danger that was going to the boundary. Um, and she's got a very smart head on her shoulders, knows exactly what to do. So I just thought that was just going to be a couple of runs. The run out was all the more sweeter and it gave us another boost that this is, this is ours and we're so close to the finish line now. I don't want to say it, but I think well, we had it. All, all Lev needed to do was make, make sure she kept her foot behind the line and didn't bowl it over waist height, really. So I was just, I was stood at the top of that mark for the last ball and I was just saying, just ball it anywhere on the stumps. If you ball a wide now, like, I cannot forgive myself, let alone the rest of the team, so just get it anywhere on the stumps. A boundary for a super over, a six to win it. Down the ground she goes, Charlotte Taylor. They have to come back and see what they can do. It'll be moot, though. It'll be game over. It is game over. The Diamonds, after falling short in 2020 and 2021, are the Rachel Hayho Flint Trophy winners in 2022. They get the job done by three runs. They held their nerve when it mattered most in the final five overs. They are worthy winners, Lydia Greenway. They absolutely are, Colo. They have been brilliant today. Um, Holly has since told me back that she the final ball when Dobson throws it in is I've taken the cleanest one-handed pickup I've ever done in my life and took the stumps off. All I remember doing was just make sure you punch them stumps to the floor and it's, the ball is dead because I've seen those games where they keep running and we're all celebrating. So I was just making sure first and foremost that the ball was dead and then and then it hit me when the people literally hit me that we'd won and I just stood in those finals for the last three years and cried my eyes out for the wrong reasons and I got to the final ball and I was like I don't even feel teary this is amazing and then I just could not stop crying <laughs> and the tears came so it was an incredible feeling and the crowd to say we were down south sounded very northern in that moment it was just um, yeah what dreams are made of. It was an amazing feeling to be honest like we've obviously never had that feeling before and it's something that I want to experience as much as I possibly can. Lev really held on nerve um, and then them scenes at the end, the girls were, I was so happy for them, I was so pleased that, you know, all the effort that they put in throughout the year and it was exactly what they deserved and, you know, it's been, we've obviously been to, you know, two finals before that and that kind of, that heartache of, of not quite getting over the line, I think that really had a little bit more fire in the belly, especially kind of being at Lord as well. I'm extremely proud of this team, the way they've gone around their cricket, um, this summer and I basically told them let's go and celebrate because we deserve this and yeah I was just dead proud of them. Um, it was a lot of we deserve that and Holly's really good at 
allowing people to enjoy the moment and she was like, do not feel embarrassed to take in every moment of this. Cry your tears, you need to cry. Hug your people, you need to hug. And then we're having a great night tonight because it's the last time we've seen each other this season. It's something I never thought I was ever going to do. I was very happy in, in my office job for many years and playing cricket was a side thing. And to even think about playing at Lords was a stupid dream to ever have because it doesn't happen for female players, let alone domestic players. And so I really let that moment sink in and I took every part of it in. And like I said, I cried unrelentlessly <laughs> at the end. I couldn't stop it and it was great. Like so many girls, were happy for me. That was a lovely feeling that like, cause I've been around and I've been quite a stalwart in that team for a while. It was lovely to have your teammates really behind you and Loz came over and we had a, a hug and she was just like, been 20 years cause we played together for so long and was like, yeah. And it was just, doesn't get much better in occasion. <laughs> it's great coming second in a competition year on year and it shows you consistent, but it's, awful to be stood there watching another team pick up a trophy and the Vipers have been so dominant you sort of if you're going to win one of these competitions you want to beat them uh, to prove you are the best and we beat them here at Headingley in the group stages but it means nothing if you can't do it on the big stage so it was all the more sweet and it felt especially the group of girls have been really consistent for the last three years it felt like just finally reward for what we all deserve. that we get from our friends and family and then being able to come to Lords and experience that win with us is yeah it's really special um, like I take a lot of pride in in what I do and having my parents and my auntie and uncle and friends follow me I think and for them to be there to experience that win and to have gone through all the emotions with all the all the other finals we've been in but also the emotions of that game because it was such a roller coaster of a game I think yeah it was really special to be able to have moments with them after the game. Um, my parents got to come to the game they don't often travel to the away games it's a bit of a trek going down to London and um, I was so thankful that they could be there because there's no one that's put up with me more or done more for me in my career than my parents and a couple of my friends came down as well and to be able to go over and hug my mum after the, the final is something I could only dream of and it was their win as much as it was my win. They've watched me cry on the side of a lot of cricket pitches when I've got a silver medal around my neck. So it was great to finally do it. Um, not with the gold medal, it's still silver, which really wound me up. It just says winner on it, but it's still a silver medal. But with the trophy, it was just as much their day as it, as it was mine. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, towards the end when I think we went over to, to one of the, the one of the stands and there was kind of massive picture with you know with all the friends and family and you look back in that picture and think there's so much support and you know to have all their parents and relatives down and brothers and sisters etc etc is a it just showed that it was you know a real real team effort and obviously the wider team is is as important than the and the team that directly goes out on the field.